Welcome to you all for this very exciting topic today. We're going to be chatting to you all about teaching in Asia, Europe and South America. Very excited to be joined by my lovely colleague Jess and Lucy as well, our special guest. I'm sure you'll be familiar with Lucy if you are on our courses. Um, she runs our tutor support session on a, on a Tuesday at 6pm, so it's great to have her aboard. Good to see so many people here. And hello if I have met you before. <laughs> and hello to all I haven't. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited to see so many people and it's great the fact this is a new year, 2022, things are going to start getting back to normal, back to normality and you know, we're, we're really excited to be able to offer these opportunities to, um, you know, discuss teaching abroad, teaching English as a foreign language is something we're so passionate about here and we're delighted to be able to share all this info with you all. So we're going to give an account of what it's really like teaching in these places. Um, so I do want this info session to be as interactive as possible. So please, at any time, feel free to pop your questions in the chat box. We'll have a couple of minutes for a Q&A a session you know after each location after each place and you know we'd love if you put the dream destination down in the chat box if you want to do that now and you know we can come back to it then at a later stage if you want to get any advice or anything like that so feel free to do so um i think we'll just start we'll go ahead so i want to kind of start off with europe europe is amazing the beauty of teaching in Europe is that you typically don't need a degree or a visa making your job hunt a whole lot easier if you are based in in Europe in Ireland so Spain France and Italy are some of the most popular destinations for our graduates at the TEFL Institute we have internships and jobs in these countries but they do only open at certain times of the year so if you are planning and going to any of those locations just keep that in mind if you do happen to get an email or notification or if you see on social media that we are recruiting for those locations to definitely you know keep that in the back of your mind and you need to get booked on as soon as possible to secure your spot um keep in mind as well that private language schools are open all year round if there's start dates and the contracts don't suit you you know an independent job search might be worthwhile as well um, one of the easiest ways to find work in Europe, if you do have a specific destination in mind, I can see some people are putting in Florence, which is amazing. Um, a way to do this is to search your dream destination, the more specific, the better. So, you know, Google it, if it's Barcelona, if it's Florence, if it's Paris, the Google search and you'll get a directory of English language schools in that location. They're very readily available. And from that, you can then figure out who the director of studies is and you can apply directly to them you can send your cv and cover letter and maybe a one or two minute intro video to the, all the schools that are in that area another really good tip as well is to send a demo lesson or even a sample lesson plan to the director of studies this will just show them what you can contribute to the to their company and show them your skills your strengths and you'll be good to go um, many schools don't advertise all year round because there is a constant turnover in language schools. So you can apply directly to them and who knows, you may absolutely get lucky. I would recommend as well joining some Facebook or LinkedIn groups for TESOL teachers. Employers often advertise their positions through social media groups, as is becoming the norm for most industries in general, you know, meaning that job post advertisements are becoming more accessible to check online, um, you know, for requirements or any particularities that um, the employer is looking for. Great, some more um, places coming in, Spain and Costa Rica, Barcelona, Lisbon, Thailand. We have some very exciting news if you want to hang on for Thailand, Kim. Um, yeah, so we'll keep going with Europe anyway. So another option, um, if you are based in Ireland, is to reach out to the French and Spanish embassies. They provide an assistantship, a language teaching assistantship, which will be quite popular for college or university students in Ireland. Um, essentially, it's where Irish natives go to France or Spain to teach English in language schools or in primary or secondary schools. So you would normally apply around 
March or April time, it's good, you know, if you're taking a gap year the following year or taking your Erasmus year abroad as well, it's, it's a great idea, it's a great programme and it's a good way as well if you are considering English foreign language teaching as an option, um, it can give you a good start. To be eligible for this scheme though, just to keep in mind, you do have to be at least 20 years of age and then younger than 35. It's because of this, making it as accessible as possible to college and university students, they would be the priority. Um, you do have to be an Irish national. You have to have completed at least two years of your higher education. It can be in any discipline, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a language or in education. It can be in anything. It can be business, it can be science, it can be anything off the top of your head, farming if you want. Um, but you do have to have two years at least completed. Um, and you would also have to have kind of a working knowledge of the language as well, you know, know the basics. If you do need to interact um, in any way, you know, if you're going to a coffee shop or if you need to order a taxi, just, just to be able to communicate um, as well. Um, language assistants do work a maximum of 12, week, 12 hours a week, not 12 weeks. Um, they are free on French school or Spanish school holidays. You do get a monthly allowance of about 794 euros to 800 euros, depending on location and living costs and things, um, you know, which will cover your accommodation and cost of living and things like that in France or Spain. Um, other than that, if you want to get TEFL qualified and be ready for any of the internship placements that are coming up, you know, Italy is something that we will keep on the back of our mind for sure. Um, you know, get your level five and specialist training for TEFL. It's, it's almost a must have and it's the norm for teaching in Europe, to be totally honest. You'll have young university students needing IELTS preparation to travel and to learn abroad. You'll have professionals needing a CV boost with the TOEIC qualification. It really is necessity at this point. Um, I am going to stop talking now. I'm sure you'll all be fed off of me by the end and I'm going to pass it over to Jess. Hi Jess. Yes, How are yeah. you? Hi guys. Um, yes, so I'm just going to speak a little bit about uh, Italy. Um, I've actually just returned from the Italy internship myself. Um, I started two years ago um, and I ended up staying on. I think it was originally uh, six months, but I ended up staying on because I loved it so much um, before I got this job. Um, so yeah, um, I guess why I decided to go to Italy originally. Um, I mean, I think the location is perfect. You know, it's in the heart of Europe and from Italy, you can kind of travel within central Europe and it's just fantastic and the trains are really good as well that was probably one of the best parts the transport is just super easy super cheap um, and of course you can also go home quite easily so if you're kind of thinking should I go to Europe or should I go to Asia um, I guess if you want to be closer to home probably Europe is better um, and what else? I guess the culture is pretty amazing. I went on holidays there before, so and I kind of fell in love with it, the food and the people. It was fantastic. Um, and yeah, I think they have good schools as well in Italy, you know, especially if you're looking at teaching uh, adults, it's great uh, to stay in Europe uh, compared to kind of Asia is more for kids, uh, teaching kids. So yeah, they were kind of the primary reasons. Um, in terms of the accommodation, um, I had to organize it, but the, um, the school was actually a great help. So I did very little. Um, my manager in the school, she sorted it all out for me. Uh, so it was very easy and really affordable um, in Italy, the accommodation. Again, that depends regionally and which city you go to, but in general, it's very affordable on uh, the wage you're getting as well. Um, if you find you, you don't get that support from the school, um, I'd recommend maybe um, renting an Airbnb and then you can kind of figure out while, figure it out while you're there because you want to gauge where you are. Um, but more than likely, I'd say the school is going to help you out. That's no problem. Um, yeah, is there anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, it was great, of course, having uh, 
TAFL helping me out as well uh, on the internship. Um, I guess I chose an internship um, as opposed to going on my own because I kind of liked having that support behind me um, and I could always call them if I need any advice on anything. And actually I have a story. When I arrived uh, in Italy, um, I was a bit overwhelmed by all the trains um, trying to get to my uh, town. So, and I was by myself. Um, and then I remember getting a phone call. Maybe it was from Sarah, I don't know. It was from one of the girls anyway. And it was just like such a great comfort. You know, they were just checking in, are you okay? And that was really a great comfort for me. So um, yeah, I think if you're kind of going to be doing uh, solo traveling or you, um, it's your first time, you're not sure, I think an internship is fantastic, really, really good. It's worth every penny. Um, yeah, anything else? Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, a good community there. Um, I think what I love about um, working in a school, a huge advantage of teaching English uh, abroad is that you just have like this instant community. So you have this kind of free pass into the into the uh, local uh, the local community um, because when you start teaching, you know you get to know your students. And, you know, you can kind of learn more about their culture. And that's kind of one of my favorite parts of teaching English. Um, it's really, really great. And of course, you have the expat community. So you're all in the same boat. So it's much easier to make friends uh, in, in that position. So, yeah, I think that's kind of more. Any other questions, Sarah? I don't know if um, I'm missing anything. That's absolutely perfect. I mean, in terms of, I suppose, Kim actually in the comments has just yeah do I have a question it's really cool that you did the internship initially and now that you work for our team and yeah we're lucky to have you and that you have had that experience of going abroad with us on an internship and now you're able to pass that experience on to yeah you with us today which is absolutely great yeah absolutely I think we just have two questions any questions yeah what's the social life like Oh, <laughs> great question. Um, actually, yeah, well, obviously I went during COVID. Um, so it's, you know, it's very different uh, pre-COVID, obviously. But um, considering the situation, it was a good social life because the Italians, and I think, you know, Europeans in general are really open and really friendly. Um, so, you know, maybe... For example, you're teaching uh, during the day, um, maybe a bit later, and then you decide all to go out for dinner together. Um, it's really a big thing in Italy is going out for a dinner and staying there for hours, um, having a couple of drinks, like an aperitif um, is always good. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's it's not too uh, dissimilar to, you know, in Ireland, you know, if you want to join, you know, sports or a yoga class and thing like that for uh, a bit of socializing but yeah the italians they're very sociable so <laughs> oh, that's fantastic yeah and did you did you learn to speak italian while you're there as another person? oh <laughs> i'm yeah kind of um i did i'm i'm still trying to learn actually um i'm trying to keep it up um yeah i had to um i had to fi uh, find my own kind of italian lessons my own italian teacher sorry um but, you know, you could just ask maybe the other teachers or your colleagues, you know, um, have you heard of any good Italian teachers that can give me lessons or you might make an Italian friend and you could do a language exchange, you know. Um, but yeah, no, actually, Italian isn't too bad out of all languages, not too bad to learn. Oh, that's great. Uh, Fergal has asked, are you limited to one region only with the internship programs, Fergal? Um, you do get to give your preference on location. Of course, you would need to be flexible, but you can give, you know, your top three preferences and, you know, we'll do our partners and ourselves. We'll do our absolute best to have you placed in, in one of the, the locations that you choose. Um, OK, I think. Is that it? I think Europe should, should be kind of done. I think we'll move on to Asia and the Middle East. We'll see a couple of questions about Japan. I know there were some people interested in Thailand. So we just, we don't, we only have an hour. So let's, let's, um, let's yeah. go in and, and we'll get to all those questions now as well. So 
most southeastern Asian countries and the UAE and Dubai, they will require a bachelor's degree for visa purposes generally. This can be in any discipline. It does not have to be a Bachelor of Education. Like I said before, it can be in science, business, any area at all. Um, it's just a working permit. Uh, we do have internships in Thailand, Taiwan, Cambodia, Vietnam, South Korea. And we would love to chat to anyone individually who would like to teach in these locations and go over requirements and things like that. So absolutely, if you want to send us a private message or if you want to email us, um, that's absolutely no problem. We'll send you all an email after anyway, just to sum up the webinar and um, you can get in touch that way. We have some blog posts about the best TEFL locations in Asia on our website too, if you want to take a look. Um, but generally for teaching in Asia, for teaching in Dubai, we would always, always recommend a level five TEFL certificate in order to ensure the best possible training. Te the TEFL industry is very, very competitive. And if you're looking for a better salary, if you're looking to save while abroad, um, which is something that's becoming a lot more popular, um, you know, you'll be looking for the higher salary. So we recommend that, that training, the level five training. Another option um, will be a hybrid TEFL course. If you don't have any experience yet and you're looking to gain some, we can do a 10 hour teaching practicum with you. Um, so get in touch if, if you are looking for something like that as well. Um, we do have a Thailand internship that has opened. We're very excited to announce that we do have four spots remaining um, for May 2022. So I just want to run through some of the requirements and some of the benefits of the program. And we're very lucky that Jess is also actually taught in Thailand. So we'll hear a bit more from her as well about her experience. So who can apply for this internship? You have to be a passport holder from one of the following countries. So the USA, Canada, Australia, the UK, Ireland, South Africa, or New Zealand. If your country isn't listed in these um, requirements, by the way, just feel free to pop us an email um, with your details and we can check it over as well. That's no problem either. Um, you will need a bachelor's degree in any discipline. You'll need your TEFL qualification. It is included in the program. If you're already TEFL qualified, you can get in touch and we, and we can arrange something. Um, you will need to be 21, up to 45 years of age. You'll have to be flexible, hardworking and mature and open to all opportunities with the changing world the way it is. Um, no criminal record. And something that I will mention, it's becoming more apparent in the current climate, as I'm sure you all understand, um, that vaccination from um, COVID-19 is something that can be a requirement for teaching in Asia. Um, so we do recommend that you talk with your GP or a doctor um, about this if you are planning on going abroad, if you are not vaccinated or um, willing to get vaccinated. Um, just to keep that in mind, but of course, um, you can reach out to us for any clarity if you need it. And for this Thailand internship, the benefits, what's included in this amazing program, it's four and a half months of a work placement, which <laughs> if you're not quite ready to commit to 12 months abroad, it's a good taster. And of course, you could extend if you wanted to at the end of your contract. The monthly allowance is 30,000 to 34,000 Thai baht, which is around 800 to 880 euros. You, of course, get your TEFL training. You'll get your orientation and training in Thailand. Um, at the moment, it's looking like it's going to be online for our current intake. But of course, we don't know what way the world will be at the time. So hopefully it could change and, and be in person. You get rent free accommodation, which is always great as, you know, an entry level position. You do want that extra support. And I think that is something, you know, to have. It, it's just great for anyone that's a first time TEFL teacher going abroad. And you will be teaching children. You'll have your weekends off, all public holidays off. You'll get your visa sponsorship, accident insurance, and of course, ongoing in-country support with our partners on the ground in Thailand and also from us here back home as well. Like Jess said, if you're stuck abroad and you don't know the trains, you know, someone will be there to help, of course. Um, for organizing yourself before going abroad, and this can go 
in the general sense, even if you're not considering an internship, these are some things that you may need to consider. You'll need international flights. Return flights generally are a must. You'll need a police check. You know, you need to have proof that you have a clean criminal record. Um, budget is something, some savings before you go abroad, of course. We would always recommend to have at least one month to six weeks of savings to get you by before you go into um, a job abroad, just to ensure that you have the means to take care of yourself and, and to get by until your first paycheck comes in. Travel insurance is definitely a must have. I mean, just to cover you in case, you know, you do need to claim compensation if your luggage goes amiss or something unfortunate happens, it's good to have that backup. We talked about vaccines, you know, consult your doctor before um, going abroad. Um, visa costs, you'll have the support um, to obtain your visa and the cost is generally reimbursed in your first month's allowance for this Thailand internship. And just to be aware of any quarantine restrictions at the time, we will keep you up to date if you're on our internship programs. And of course, you can give us a call. We're more than happy to discuss it with anyone that is going abroad. Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs is a good website to have as well. If you are TEFL obsessed like we are, um, it's always good to keep up to date. And Jess, I suppose we'll jump back over to you. Um, going to Thailand is quite a long way away from here in Ireland. Um, why did you decide this was the place for you to go and jump into teaching? Yeah, so obviously it was my first uh, teaching job abroad. Um, so yeah, I guess I decided on Thailand because I never did a gap year. You know, I, I went straight from school to uni to, um, to my job. So I kind of wanted to have that experience um, and have a proper travel experience, you know, a bit of culture shock. Um, and it was fantastic. Um, yeah, and I guess I also wanted um, that experience. It's great experience for um, primary school teaching. You know, you have they actually give you quite a bit of responsibility which, and good experience, which is great because I guess, you know, teaching is done slightly different there compared to Europe. So I had great experience um, and it was a great way to start off uh, my teaching career. So um, it was really good. Um, also, super, super cheap, like to live there. It's insanely cheap uh, for what you get. Um, and the salary was more than enough. Um, so it was it was really, really good. And of course, you know, at the weekends or the holidays, Thailand seemed to have a lot of like bank holidays or a lot of celebrations. So you have plenty of time to go traveling um, and see the most amazing places. Um, so, yeah, there's really no negatives to Thailand, I have to say. <laughs> um, yeah, anything else, sir? No. It's amazing. I suppose, is there anything, you know, anyone that is considering going to Thailand take note of from your experience? Yeah. Did you love teaching children? Do you prefer teaching adults? What was, you know, what were the highs? Yeah, I definitely, I wasn't expecting going into the into Thailand to kind of fall in love with teaching, but I did. Um, I kind of went for the traveling experience and just to try a different job, but I absolutely fell in love with teaching the kids. It was fantastic um, and really good experience um, and really developed uh, a passion for traveling as well. Um, and I think something that probably a lot of you guys maybe feel is, you know, uh, when you're thinking about which town you want to go to or which city and you think, oh, I need to go to Bangkok because that's, you know, I know that city. and there's going to be loads of expats there, but I actually went to kind of a lesser known uh, town and it was a really great experience. And I think if you do end up in a place you don't know, it's for me, I actually prefer that because you're really kind of immersed in the culture and um, it's, it's, you know, it's different. And so if you do end up uh, in that situation, uh, don't be scared because it's actually a really great experience. And Sometimes it's nice to get away from kind of the touristy uh, cities and they're usually more expensive as well. So if you get out of, um, you know, uh, the bigger cities, it's much cheaper to live there as well. Brilliant. We do have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, is the accommodation for the internship shared? 
and is it with other TEFL teachers? So it's your own apartment. Um, if you are planning on going as a group and you do want to share accommodation, of course, we can look into that for you. If you just want to pop us an email, um, that's absolutely no problem. Um, was the culture shock hard to get used to? Yeah, I am. Um, for me, I kind of like it. So I'm kind of I kind of thrive in culture shock I don't know why but um yeah I think you know I get that question a lot like is it better to go to Europe or Asia you know is Europe less of a culture shock I think it really depends personally but um I kind of love it you know it really depends what you're going for if you want to go for something completely different like you want to go to South America or Asia um, you want to have that real travel experience, then I think you'd love it. Or if, you know, you want to be close to home, um, better to be in Europe. Um, but yeah, I kind of liked it. I, I liked, you know, learning a new language, meeting different people. And I think that's kind of part of the package, really, you know, um, kind of just to stay open minded to anything, you know. But yeah, it can be can be kind of crazy, but that makes the best memories. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, we do have a couple of questions just to yeah. you have your TEFL search going before. Um, you would need to have it done before you go. It is included in the internship package. But if you already have your TEFL search completed, just send us an email and we'll be able to arrange um, an alumni discount with you. That's absolutely no problem. We love to help out our students um, as best as we can. Um, and we also have um, a question what is the longest time off that you got teaching in a semester if a friend came to visit or something like that you probably Are, just is this in in Italy or Thailand sorry Asia or Europe either or either uh, the longest time off um oh I guess yeah it depends on what holidays the school does but like I I do feel in both of my experiences I had quite a, a lot of time off you know you kind of do end up than your typical nine to five job, you know, so you do have plenty of time to do all the traveling you want and all that. So, yeah, don't worry. Um, but yeah, definitely Thailand had a lot more um, holidays. Um, but yeah, you do. You definitely have the free time for sure. Yeah. And that's why Thailand is one of my favorite internships um, is because if you are planning on going as a group or if you do have family that are coming over to visit, mm. um, you know it's it's absolutely fantastic and yeah um yeah i think i'll move on just i know there are a couple of questions there don't worry guys we will get back to you um i just i i'm conscious of time as well um the vietnam internship is another really exciting um program that we have launched we have five more positions for vietnam um which is really really exciting um i'll just run through the eligibility quite quickly um, you have to be aged 21 to 65, um, have a passport from the USA, Canada, UK, Ireland, South Africa, Australia or New Zealand. Um, I know that there was a question if non-native speakers can apply to the internship programs. Um, you can send us an email. We'll take it on a case by case basis. This is the general um, requirements. But of course, um, we'll do our best absolutely to, to help you get started on your TEFL journey. Um, you will need a legalized bachelor's degree. Have your TEFL qualification. It is included, but of course, as we said, if you're one of our alumni, that's great too. Um, and we need you to have a hard work ethic, be enthusiastic, flexible, and have an open mind to this fabulous new culture. Um, so for Vietnam, You'll get some pre-departure training and support from us here at the TEFL Institute. Um, you'll get your full TEFL training, the visa assistance and organizing documents assistance as well. Um, we'll keep you up to date with current affairs and, you know, help you organize COVID tests or flights, etc. cetera, if, if you need it. Um, when you arrive, there's a full welcome orientation. So this is a week long orientation in Ho Chi Minh. The hotel is paid for. Um, and you know you will spend this time kind of getting to know your colleagues other teachers and kind of embarking on language lessons learning more about the culture um, and your accommodation assistance during this time and you know vietnam is great because it's a network of teachers english teaching expats it's 
it's very easy to organize to be able to you know meet others there's always someone around the corner from Ireland I've heard it's just it sounds like an amazing program um and just to run through the allowances and things like that you get a monthly allowance of about 1300 to 1500 euros this depends on the amount of hours that you work so if you are looking for a higher pay scale as i said before if you are planning on going over to save you can work more hours and get that higher um and be higher on the on the salary um you will get your 30 hour teaching young learners TEFL course and the extensive ebook as well um, with lessons to teach young learners. Um, as I said, your seven day orientation in Ho Chi Minh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and we do have a question there. Do you need to have any prior teaching experience for the internship? You absolutely do not. These are an internship is a way to get you started on your journey abroad. So with an internship, you can take it as an entry level position where you're getting started. We don't expect you to have any teaching experience. That's what we're here to do. If you really need some extra help with that, of course, um, you know, you could do our 10 hour teaching course. I might put a teaching practicum if you, if you think that you need some extra help. With that. And the biggest plus with the Vietnam internship is that you do get post placement support. So once your 12 months are up, this placement is starting in May 2022 is our next one. Um, you do get a lifetime placement guarantee. So if you are planning on traveling to another country or planning on staying in Vietnam and maybe moving around cities, you do have that support behind you as well. And I'll just go into South Korea very briefly and we'll get back to some of your lovely questions. Um, for South Korea, you'll need to, for our internship program or just in general, if you're planning on going independently, um, you'll need a bachelor's degree issued from a university. Your TEFL site, of course, a clean background check. Um, you need a passport from UK, Ireland, um, US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, you'll need to be available for one year minimum. It's a 12 month contract starting in September, 2022. And you would need to have some flexibility on location. South Korea is one of the most popular TESOL programs because of the support that you do get, um, both from us and the partners. So it's really essential that um, you do have flexibility and um, because we do have a lot of teachers going, which is great because you'll never, you'll never be on your own. You'll always be part of the community. Um, I'll just go back to some questions here. Um, Can you work as a TEFL teacher in Asia without a degree if you try and find work off your own accord and not through any internships? So you can, you can find work abroad um, in Asia without a, de a degree. Um, for teaching abroad, I would, if you don't have a degree, I would recommend a level five TEFL certificate. Um, it would generally be at an employer's discretion if they do require a degree and things. Another option, if you are planning on going to Asia, if you don't have a degree, is to do online teaching. Um, I know Lucy will, will chat a bit about this in a moment as well. But um, online teaching is great. All you have to do is pack your laptop and go and you can be anywhere in the world, um, which is fantastic. Um, any other questions? Is there a possibility for teaching young learners in Italy or is it only adults? Um, so for teaching in Italy, generally it will be teaching adults. The, the age range can vary. You could be teaching young adults, um, you know, possibly teenagers or kind of in their late teens, um, but, but generally that, that's the scope. And is there an age restriction for South Korea? So for the South Korean internship, we generally um, would say 21 is the minimum. If you are younger than this or not yet at that age, um, you can send us an email and we can check for you, of course. Um, but that, that's the requirement that we do have on the website at the moment. Does anyone have any other questions that they just want to pop in quickly? No. Oh, we have one. What is the situation in Japan? Um, age, 
and accommodation. Um, we don't actually run a program in Japan at the moment. Um, from my own knowledge, with the way that the world is at the moment, it's quite difficult to get to Japan um, with the COVID and things like that. But we'll definitely take a look for you. If something does come up, if a language school is recruiting, um, we can absolutely get in touch. Um, just pop us an email um, after the session and, and we'll take a look for you. And we do have some questions, any internships for South America, maybe in the future, um, any work in South America. So that's great. I think that's that's my cue to move on to South America. Um, we're very lucky to be joined by Lucy. I know I've done a lot of talking today, um, but Lucy has some phenomenal info for us. South America is somewhere that is becoming increasingly in need of TEFL teachers. There are some amazing locations and opportunities to experience there. Argentina is somewhere that is coming very popular. Um, we're seeing a lot of job advertisements for placements there. Local language schools, volunteering programs, and also online teaching are some of the ways, you know, to get to South America. So there's, there's plenty of opportunity there. If you are planning on volunteering as a TEFL instructor in South America, a 120 hour certificate will kind of guide you nicely on how to begin as a TEFL teacher. Or if you do want um, a more professional qualification to get you by, um, maybe a 240 hour master TEFL course would be a good option, which contains, you know, all that two important specialist training that I can't stop talking about, you know, a 30 hour IELTS, TOEIC exam, um, preparation courses, teaching young learners, teaching business English, even teaching English online. They're super important um, specialist training to have and really can't recommend them enough in terms of, of um, TEFL teaching. So I think we'll do, um, we'll go over to Lucy and if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit more about your experience teaching abroad. Okay, so um, South America or particularly Ecuador. Um, I've been to most of the different countries in South America and I've, I've absolutely loved them. Um, Ecuador is the only South American country I've actually taught in, um, but I taught there for 14 months. It was my first teaching job and I've, I fell in love with it. Um, I found the job posting, I think it was on Dave's ESL, um, which I've just put in the chat there. So um, they have a, a Korean job board and a China job board and an international job board. And I found my Ecuador job posting on the international job board on Dave's ESL Cafe. And um, so I mentioned Argentina. Um, I have occasionally seen adverts for or job postings in Argentina listed on there. Um, but they seem to have adverts from all over the place, like all over the world. So that's somewhere I would recommend checking. Um, so um, I have some top tips for teaching in, the, um, in South America and in Ecuador in particular. Um, first of all, with getting there, um, most if not pretty much any private language school will help you with your visa or they'll let you know what you need to do and they'll provide any necessary documentation both for what you need to do at the embassy, embassy in your own country before you leave. And also um, they should help you with any further steps once you arrive in South America. Um, that's exactly what happened with me. Um, and this is something that you can check if you get an interview, you can check at the interview stage. You can inquire what kind of help they offer with that. And also, um, support getting accommodation. Um, so some schools um, will provide free accommodation for teachers. Others, like the one I worked for, don't offer free accommodation, but they will help you to find somewhere. Um, just a quick question there from Rachel. Um, I did learn Spanish. That was something I was going to mention actually, is that a lot of schools will either offer free Spanish classes to teachers or at a discount. Um, so that's definitely something to take advantage of 
if 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 they offer it. I I did learn some Spanish, um, not fluently, but you know I learned enough to be able to um, make my way around the country and traveling. Um, you could. I'll, I'll come back to the questions at, at the end. I'll just say what I prepared first and I'll come back at the end. Um, so general tips. Um, first of all, be prepared to teach some of the loveliest students you could ever hope to meet. Um, very interested in you as a teacher and also very interested in one another, uh, which really, really helps when building a happy um, atmosphere in class. Um, I would also say, um, talking about Ecuador in general is, and any country in South America, take any opportunity you can to explore the country. You know, whether it's the local area um, at weekends or further afield during public, long public holiday weekends, for example, in Carnival, which is usually in February time, um, or even further, <laughs> a field during more extended holidays or after you finish your contract, you can teachers often travel a bit after they finish the contract. And it's something that can be great to do by yourself or as a way to bond with new colleagues. Um, so for example, I went to South America by myself, um, but you know, I did, a, I did quite a lot of traveling, some of it by myself, um, some of it with some of my new colleagues or um, including admin colleagues, not necessarily only other teachers, but I would say um, make friends with any admin staff who may often be locals. Um, and they can show you around and uh, introduce you to new cuisines and places to visit and things like that. Um, and I also recommend traveling around and doing things, going out and doing things if you do find yourself getting a bit homesick. You know, don't just sit at home, though it might be tempting. Go out and do things. Um, there are so many absolutely amazing places to visit in Ecuador and other countries like Argentina, Peru, Brazil, Chile, places like that. Um, you know, I could talk for hours if you let me. You know, no matter what you like or what you're interested in, like history, museums, adventure sports, wildlife, surfing, hiking, volcano trekking, things like that. So there's something for you there. And uh, there's some great hostels in Ecuador and other places in South America as well. And um, you'll hear music everywhere, like uh, salsa, bachata, cumbia, things like that. Um, public transport in Ecuador is very, very easy, and especially if you have learned some basic phrases in Spanish. Um, you know, so you can buy bus tickets, tell taxi drivers where you need to go and things like that. Um, public transport is cheap. The intercity roads are good. The Ecuadorian government has invested quite heavily in infrastructure over the last decade. And a half. Uh, it's one of the smallest South American countries, though it packs a lot in. Um, so although journeys can often still take quite a long time by bus, you don't get the 24 hour plus bus journeys like you might get in larger countries. Um, and domestic flights are often cheap as well. I remember taking several when I was there and I had no issues whatsoever, just using uh, skyscanner.net, for example. Um, speaking of exploring, another top tip is when you first arrive, ask your new students about good places to visit. It's a fantastic way of breaking the ice in the new class. Um, you know, getting your students to give you recommendations. And they're often only too happy to tell you. Um, you know, I've often found students almost falling over themselves to give me advice. It was really lovely. And uh, depending on the topic of the lesson and the age and level, you can ask for tips about other things as well. For example, what's best to eat, where's best to eat, things like that. Um, which leads me to another tip, which is to try out the local cuisine. Um, try a lot of different dishes, 
to be honest, before I came to Ecuador, I didn't know much about the cuisine at all, but um, I absolutely loved it. Um, similar to Peruvian, if you've ever had that. Um, there are some fantastic dishes and snacks. It's quite varied, and especially with different dishes, um, different, typical to the coast, others to the mountains, others to the rainforest. Uh, my last tip is to be prepared for the climate because South America is such a diverse continent regarding geography and climate. Uh, you don't want to get caught out. I mean, obviously you can buy clothes and things, you know, whatever you need to buy there, but it is it does help to be aware of what you're getting into. So, for example, I was in Guayaquil, which is a big port city on the coast, which had a tropical climate, for extremely hot, extremely humid all year round. Um, but if you're somewhere like Quito in the mountains, that's a, the weather's a lot more changeable and seasonable and temperate there. And the same in the Galapagos Islands. And also remember that, you know, for example, Argentina and Chile, uh, you're in the Southern Hemisphere. So if you arrive in July or August, that's the middle of winter. Um, and um, that's the end of what I've prepared. So let's go back over some of the questions. So um, did, I, did I drink mate in South America? Um, not when I was teaching there in Ecuador, because they don't really drink it there, but I did try it when I, I visited Buenos Aires um, on a separate occasion uh, for my honeymoon, as it happens. Um, so yes, I did try it. Um, let me see. Um, There's one question there, Lucy. What is the accommodation like in Ecuador and South America? And can you live by yourself on a TEFL wage? Um, the accommodation, it, it varies. Um, I was, I found a, um, a flat with another, with a colleague of mine. I think we were paying about 500 USD a month, um, or no, it might even be 250, I forget. Um, but, but either way, that's still a lot cheaper than what you would find in Europe. Uh, yes, you can live by yourself on a TEFL wage, um, because it's still, I mean, it does kind of vary from country to country within South America. And some countries are cheaper than others. Um, I think Argentina is one of the more expensive ones. So I'm, I'm not sure, for example, if you're in Buenos Aires um, or in Santiago, Chile. Um, though, though I, I think pretty much anywhere you should be okay. Um, can you drive around South America on a motorbike? Um, I don't drive a motorbike, I'm afraid, so I can't really tell you. But um, I, I have heard of people doing that. It seems to be quite a popular thing to do. Um, at least pre-COVID. Um, so I would imagine, you know, a lot of people cycle as well around South America. So I can't really talk about insurance or tax, but I know a lot of people do do it. So I imagine it can't be that difficult to sort out. Um, let me see, someone talking about Latin American Spanish. Yes, that is a little bit different to European Spanish. Uh, how safe is Ecuador? Um, depends where you are. I mean, Guayaquil, for example, isn't that safe, to be totally honest, though it has got safer in most recent years. Um, but I would say don't put that make don't let that put you off coming because um, you, know, you take basic safety precautions that you would in any big city, really. Maybe don't kind of go out to isolated, isolated parts of town in the middle of the night by yourself. Um, be careful with um, on crowded buses with um, pickpockets and uh, just watch out for yourself and um, you should be okay. Um, I have heard there's a bit of um, some violent crime going on at the moment, but um, I would say um, as long as you take the basic proportions um, precautions, sorry, then I would try not to worry too much about that. Um, let me see. 
anything else, any many teaching jobs in Colombia. Um, I can't really talk, I, I don't know much about Colombia in particular, that's one of the few countries I haven't been to in South America. But again, if you check out Dave's ESL Cafe, I have seen Colombia appear on there every now and again. We do have the TESOL Jobs Board on our website as well. If you do want to take a look, there's advertisements for various countries. And I know there was a couple of questions about online teaching. You can take a look there as well. It's just on the website. Um, I'll include a link into the email that you receive after the webinar and you can take a look there. Uh, the, someone else, um, Celeste, has asked, what is the average wage for ESL teachers in South America? Um, I'm not entirely sure, especially as it varies from country to country. Um, and also it depends, you know, say if you're teaching for a private language school, it depends on how many hours you're contracted to teach. So for example, um, I think I was contracted to teach 80 hours a month and I was making between around 800 to 1,000 USD a month, but that was more than enough. And I managed to save quite a bit doing that. And, um, I think it's, um, if there's any other questions, I think that's me finished. Perfect. I know there's a question there. Um, is there a certain time of year that schools tend to hire in? I think just in general for TEFL, um, generally language schools, private language schools will be year year round um, there's no particular time january is quite a popular time we've seen a couple um, and had a couple of language schools reach out to us for for tefl teachers um, so if you are planning on going to any location please do let us know we can pop on a waiting list and if we hear for somewhere um, we'll let you know as soon as possible and um september and october seem to be quite popular as well i don't know lucy and jess have you any experience in that when you were applying for jobs? Was there any particular time of year that? Yeah, um, I, I think. Oh, sorry. Um, um, no, I was, I was just going to say with South America, it doesn't seem to be, at least for, I can only really speak from my experience, but it didn't seem to be any one time of year, like September, for example, where it was noticeably busier. Hmm. I mean, some might, you know, if uh, language schools might. You know, if they start their academic year in September, you may see more jobs around that time. Um, but I'd say it's relatively frequent throughout the year. You'll see job offerings for South America. Yeah, so I, I think, guess. you know, yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, just to, yeah, apply all year round. You know, you never know as well, uh, even if it's not the start of the academic year, someone's a teacher's dropped out, um, you know, they might need uh, a teacher ASAP. Um, also depends if you want to do like a summer camp. So that's obviously going to be during the summer. Um, that will be, you know, with uh, younger kids or teenagers. So generally, I find uh, the maybe in Europe, I guess, um, teaching adults during the summer, it's quite quiet because they're all off on holidays or something like that. So that's kind of the prime time for teaching uh, younger students during the summer. Absolutely. That's great. I think we're coming up on the hour, so I think we will leave you all go. Um, but it's been absolutely great. It's been such an interactive webinar. It's been absolutely fantastic to see all of your questions, hear some of your dream destinations, and hopefully you will all reach out to us and we'll be able to help you start on this amazing journey. Thank you to Lucy, especially, and, and Jess, of course, you both have a wealth of knowledge. And thank you all so much for joining us and hopefully see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Bye, Bye. guys.